All right, so it's time for the challenge to recap. We're gonna tell our story, we'll finish our story here. So at Universal Containers, you're the admin and you finished building the flow. So you connect with Sherry and you ask her to test it in the Universal Container Full Copy Sandbox, which is uh, where we built it <laughs> in the story. Um, you mentioned that you encountered a bug when you were building the flow and that you fixed it by having the flow not run when there was no value in the pick list. So if the assigned coordinator pick list is empty, the flow doesn't run. You also let her know that you created a formula uh, to ensure that pick list misspellings don't cause errors for end users. She tries it out and she loves the functionality. She knows it's going to save her team a ton of time in data entry and it's going to improve their accuracy overall by not forgetting to... Uh, change the owner for a specific task. She appreciates you informing her about the bug and thinks your solution with not running the flow is perfect. And so good job. We successfully have completed you know, the challenge. So kind of putting all the pieces together, just as a recap, we did some pre-work where we created users and a pick list, and we created uh, two new users and one pick list on the task object. And just recall that we had to use the activity object to make custom fields on the task object, which is a little bit confusing if you're new to Salesforce, but you'll get used to that over time. And I think that's, um, well, events, tasks and events both share that, but no other object in Salesforce really works like that. The next thing we did is we built a record triggered before save flow. And remember, it's a before save flow when you optimize for fast field updates. We then used a get element to get records um, to find the user that we wanted the task to be updated for. And then we use an assignment to update the task owner with the ID of the user that our get records found. Uh, we tried it out and we found that the task was updated successfully in the UI, uh, but we did encounter two bugs. So we did some rework where we tested and, and fixed the bug and we restricted the configuration element for the start of the flow to make it not run when the pick list was empty. And then we added further bug proofing by creating a formula so that even if the name of a user was misspelled, uh, no errors would appear. Finally, we, we spent uh, some time going through the debug wizard and just learning about the basic functionality there. That uh, use of the debug wizard is a key skill when it comes to flow building. And honestly, it's something that you know is not used as much as it should be. I see a lot of people working with flows and they just uh, either don't understand the debug wizard or don't um, appreciate its value. So getting started learning that now will serve you well over your flow building career. And uh, with that, that's the end of uh, challenge two. So congratulations making it this far in the course. You're learning really fast. We've covered a ton of ground and we're gonna keep going in the next challenge. I will see you there.